Hey, Hickok45 here. You know, I was doing some safe cleaning the other day. Look what I found behind some guns and uh, magazines. A CZ75B. I forgot I had this thing. I guess I've had it for about 20 years. So let's just see if it works. I believe it still works. Pretty nice. No oil in 20 years. CZ75B. Actually, I just told you a story, didn't I? And you knew that. If you know me, this is a fairly new gun. I've had it a few weeks, couple weeks, I guess. CZ75B. Got a lot of requests to shoot the CZ, to get a hold of a CZ. And I've had uh, my eyeball on for a while, primarily for that reason. And, uh, you know, it is one of the classic firearms, so I uh, want to get hold of it. I had one, really, about 21, 22, 23 years ago, late 80s. I think it was a, a what, TZ-75 tank folio, really one of the versions of it, basically the same gun. And uh, I had uh, picked it up in a kind of a match thing down in the southern part of Tennessee. We shot every month, and it was a fairly high entry fee, and at the end of the year, you got a uh, choice on a, a gun table, you know, wherever you finish for the year. And uh, when I, it was my turn, I looked over what was there. This was pretty much pre-Glocks. I don't remember any Glocks being on the table. It might have been 86, 87, 97, I don't know. And uh, I felt that thing, ooh, that fits like a glove. And uh, that was my choice. And then I, uh, I traded off for something else at a gun shop, and Ten Outdoors 9 actually ended up with it. He bought it from that gun shop. So it was kind of funny. That gun made the rounds. But when you pick one up, they feel great. Let's try it again. And let's put our ears on. You know, I have forgotten that a time or two. Okay. Who wants to be shot first? <laughs> this thing shoots pretty well. I am shooting 115 grain ammo, which I don't normally like that much, but let's go out gong hunting right away. Hey, I see some hits on it out there, and I heard it hit. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Nice sights and uh, nice trigger. So, let's put it down here, and I guess I better be loading mags. I just have four mags in it. It just comes with two, but I have acquired a couple of extras while, oh, waiting to do a video with it. All right, so, use some of this ammo that uh, the Uzi didn't like here we bought uh, a few weeks ago. This is 115 grain ammo. And uh, that seems to be what you find mostly when you, you find a decent price on ammo, any kind of bulk at all, you end up with the lighter weight uh, bullets, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll shoot them. I really do like the uh, point of impact better from almost any 9mm uh, when I shoot at least 124 grain ammo and then preferably 147 grain ammo, but it's okay. So, CZ-75. You know, by coincidence, uh, this gun came out in 1975. That's, uh, that's the year of inception of that gun. So uh, a little bit of a coincidence there. It's called a CZ-75. This is a CZ-75B, as you see. I even Czech Republic. Right there on the frame. And uh, these guns do date back to 1975. Czechoslovakia. The... Uh, I'll give you just a little bit of history. I just know enough to be dangerous. They, uh, you know, back uh, back then, back in the day, 
the Czechs have always uh, liked to make their own guns. You may be familiar with the VZ, I think it's a VZ-58. It's a variant kind of of the, of the AK. It's the Czech uh, version of the AK and very highly respected. In fact, I know a fellow who has one, so we'll be doing a uh, kind of a review of that gun at some point. And it's pretty interesting, but uh, they, as I understand, they, they like to make their own firearms. They didn't, uh, like the rest of the folks, most of them in the Warsaw Pact, they just got their firearms from the uh, Soviet Union, the USSR, back in the day. Uh, they, they, they put their own guns together when they could. And uh, now this gun, the CZ-75, there was something weird about the, the patents on it. They made it to sell outside the country, basically. And... Uh, and there was some kind of secret patent deal with it and all this. And uh, for some reason, anybody who wanted to was able to copy it, like right away. They didn't have to wait for patents to run out. And so there were a lot of variations of it just right away. And you may have seen some other, other ones. The gun I had was one of those, I guess. And uh, I didn't know much about them at the time. But, uh, and there are other guns out there on the market today that are patterned after that, just like the 1911, you know, any, uh, or branding high power. Any gun that is really successful and people like, and if it's legal to do it, the, it's going to be copied, of course. Uh, so, the thing I mentioned earlier, if you have never held a CZ-75 in your hand, uh, you, and you like firearms like I like firearms, let me warn you, don't pick it up. Because this gun fits like a glove. Let me break it down a little bit, show you how it's a little bit different from some. This is one of the early Wonder Nines, like the Browning High Power. You know, it kind of predates, you know, Glocks and all these others. And uh, does hold, uh, see the magazine, 16 rounds. So it's, a, it's been a high capacity gun for a long time. That was one of the attractions early on, of course. It's hard for a lot of you, if you're young, to imagine a time before, you know, the Glocks and the 17 round mags and all that. So let me get a brass, piece of brass here, and open it up for you. You line up these little markers right there. And you push the uh, slide lock out. I always need something besides just my my finger because uh, it's a little stiff. Well, I've had it out two, three times. What am I doing? I'm sure, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's supposed to be cocked. Let me go ahead and try that again. I've got to line it up here. I try to. Sometimes we're trying to get the camera view too, and it makes it a little more awkward to to do something like this. There we go. I've been using a wooden handle of a screwdriver in the reloading room, but I figured that case would be good enough. Okay, so then you pop the slide off. Now, you've got the lengthless barrel, just like uh, the Browning High Power. Okay, you don't have the barrel length, you know, the loose length like you have with a 1911. So it's all one piece there. And the uh, spray, nothing all that unusual, except the, it has the internal rails. Now notice the slide, the rails are on the outside of the slide like this, and it slips inside the frame. See, a little different. See how that works? Pretty interesting, huh? Normally when you got the slide and you're lubing it, you know, you're lubing in there and back here. But no, the rails are out here. So it sits down, you know, in the frame. Supposed to make it uh, more solid and even more accurate. And uh, I, I can see how it might, you know, inherently uh, more accurate. It's a very solid, you know, construction. Pretty interesting uh, uh, difference there. Uh, I, I can't think of another gun myself that that is made like that. Uh, you might, you might. I don't know much about firearms, but uh, I really don't know a lot about all of them. You know, there are so many models, but that's kind of interesting the way that uh, works. And you got your uh, barrel lugs and everything else is pretty similar. Get the spring back in there, recoil spring. So CZ75. Uh, it is called the CZ-75 because it came out in 1975. I actually knew that, believe it or not. You fell for that lame humor there. So you line that back up. Pump this back in. And there we go. We're back in business. Okay, it has nice uh, three-dot sights. They're not night sights. They have kind of a green look about them. They're not night sights. They are luminous. Uh, it. Uh, this is a gun, you know, I always complain about the double action uh, firearms going from double to single well that's what would happen of course with this gun you fire it double action long pull and then of course uh, it's going to you know, be cocked and you've got single action but with this gun you can actually carry it like a 1911 if you want 
and you've got the similar operation. So the safety right there. So basically, I could cock it, put it in my holster, and I have a 1911. You know, same feel, pull it out, pop the safety off, click. Very good feel to it. The safety is just like a 1911. If anything, it's better. It's out a little bit further, and I really like the feel of that. And I've noticed, I mentioned this in the radio show, that you can also, with a good grip on the gun, you can flip that thing up. It doesn't take uh, a lot of thumb strength. You, know, you don't have a lot of strength in your thumb necessarily to raise something when you've got a, a grip on the gun. And uh, you can push it down and you can you know, activate it or deactivate it without changing your grip. It's, it's a really nice safety system. So if, uh, you know, I mean, this, this is a nice carry gun if you want a big gun. Just carry it like that and you can carry it cock and lock if you want to. Boom, you're ready to go. Or you can carry it like that and just, you know, have a double action. You can cock it when you pull the trigger. That's a really uh, key feature of this firearm. Uh, other than that, you know, there's not a lot of fancy stuff. This gun, this design is older. Now, they make this in a lot of different configurations. They make it uh, in polymer and with uh, uh, rails and everything under the sun. I'm not even familiar with all of them. There was one I was thinking, ah, that's the one I'll get. It was one of the polymer ones. Then I got to looking around, studying a little bit more. And I saw the CZ-75B that is kind of the classic metal version of this gun. I thought, well, I think that's the one I'll just get because that's kind of the classic. And it's a range gun for me mainly. You're plinking around the farm gun. It's probably not a gun I would carry. Uh, it's probably not going to replace a Glock or, you know, another gun. It's 9 millimeter. Um, you know, and a gun this big with this kind of weight. Uh, so I just wanted to get one because it is a classic uh, firearm. It's like you don't have a 1911 yet. You know, you, maybe you're not going to carry it, but you just need a 1911, don't you? Especially this year. So that's kind of where this gun fits. And I really like it. This grip, if you could take a, a handful of modeling clay and just squeeze it, you know, get you a big chunk of it that's kind of, cylindrical or whatever rectangular and just squeeze it the way you would like a grip to be that's what this grip feels like it's like somebody did that it just fits like a glove and it's one of the most attractive uh, characteristics features of, of this gun now I guess now everybody I've talked to uh, feels pretty much the same way so you may have a different size hand and it doesn't feel that good to you but it's just amazing pick one up sometime in a shop a gun show uh, even if you don't have any intention of buying one, you'll see what I mean. It just feels like a million bucks. So this is the uh, second generation, I believe, you know, with, uh, of this gun. And it comes in a lot of different configurations. Like I say, you can get with a decocker. Uh, I think some of them, the, the uh, thumb safety there is a decocker as well. And, you know, with a polymer. And I think all the polymer ones have the, the big rail under here probably. Maybe not. I'm not a big rail guy, you know, uh, so uh, I kind of like this. This is this is neat, and uh, it, you know, big external extractor, healthy extractor there. So you know, this, and then your magazines are your high capacity magazines, steel mags. So, and I had a hard time finding a couple other mags. I've been to several gun shows, and they're not that easy to find uh, used ones, uh, and even new ones necessarily. But I was able to find a couple extras. In fact, I bought a couple at a gun show. They were labeled CZ-75. You know, negotiated with a guy. Got them down to a reasonable price. Got home with them. I thought, oh, great. That's some... They weren't even CZ mags. Turns out they're... <sighs> oh, they're for... Uh... Not a brown. Ah, there's something else, you know. But you've got to watch it when you buy mags. Because a lot of them look alike. They really do. So, uh... oh, it was for a, a SIG uh, 226. Which I don't have. So... Anyway, CZ-75, sweet gun. Let's shoot a little bit more here. Since we have some magazines loaded up. All right. <laughs> nice, nice. Sweet. That's a nice trigger, really does. Very nice trigger. 
See if these 115 grain bulls will knock uh, the tree around, the limbs around. I don't think they do very reliably. Still fun to shoot at though. Ah, oh, pumpkin. Let's take a couple of shots on him. <laughs> ah, don't you love fall? Oh, there's nice orange targets. We'll load up a couple more. Uh, so this the uh, this is a pretty sweet gun. I, I can see why so many people have been after me for so long. Uh, you know, I just can't get to every firearm. I have so many that I like. But uh, this is a gun that uh, you could fall in love with. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about it. It's a, it's a sweetie if you just uh, want a range gun. And one of the things, well, I shouldn't say that. You carry a gun as well. But uh, you might consider the polymer frame, you know, if you're going to carry it. Uh, be lighter and uh, I'm assuming just as reliable and work just as well. It has a very good reputation, no doubt about that. But I have been getting requests to uh, review one of these forever, to get my hands on one on a CZ, and uh, just, just regularly. So I started looking. Like I've said before, I see all the requests. I can't shoot every gun there is, acquire every gun there is. But I do see all of them. I don't answer a lot of those messages. People are like, do you have this? Do you have it? What do you think about reviewing one of these guns? What's your thoughts on reviewing one of these? Uh, as I've said before in radio shows and stuff, I, with so many messages I answer, I just I make a middle note of those and go on. Uh, because uh, people request fire, certain firearms in so many different ways. And, and quite often they're asking a question. I don't mean to be rude by not answering those. I, I just, I know what they're saying. I wish you would get your hands on a CZ or get your hands on a Sherman tank or, you know, whatever they're requesting. So, uh, and I'll show you my holster here in a minute. I, uh, I have a couple of standby holsters that I use with guns like this. Uh, so I don't have to go out and buy a holster necessarily for it. Uh, just to, to enjoy it, packing it around the farm or whatever. Uh, and that is, uh, well, let me go and show you. It's, uh, it's a Don Hume, just outside, just kind of a paddle holster there, just uh, outside the waistband holster. It's for actually a Glock, small Glock, 9mm or 40. That's what that holster is for. And this gun fits in it beautifully. It, it really feels as though it's made for it. If that tells you anything, I don't know. I just always try those. I have one for a Glock 30 or Glock uh, 20 or the big Glocks as well. If any gun I get, any handgun, maybe short of a Desert Eagle, will fit in one of those two holsters pretty well. And I just make do with it. And this thing fits like a glove. It really does. It doesn't really strike you as having a contour of a Glock, but for some reason it fits beautifully. And uh, I'm bad about not telling you that. That's a Don Hume outside the waistband holster. I don't know the model number, but it's a good old standby uh, holster. By the way, that belt is uh, 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 recently Diamond D Custom Leather sent me that. You know, I've got some of their holsters. I bought two or three holsters from them, and uh, they sent me a belt. And they sent me one holster, but they do great work. It's a fancy stitch uh, gun belt holster, but it's not really extra thick. It, it's just perfect the way I like them. But uh, so anyway, I'm bad about. Oh, and over here I have some Phobos. Now these are $500 mag pouches, Phobos paddle holster uh, inside the waistband. You just tuck them in there. Actually, they're about $15, just kidding. So I'm bad about letting you know what I have on and all that. You know, I'll be uh, looking at comments. There'll be a question on a video two years old. Somebody want to know, uh, what holster were you wearing in that? You know, and I'm wearing a shirt over it. And I have no clue what I was wearing back then. <laughs> I have to go back and try this. I can't even figure it out sometimes from seeing the video. So, uh, I have tried to do better about that and uh, list that in the descriptions, but I forget sometimes. Okay, get these mags loaded up with a couple more shots. We're just shotting animals. We're going to shoot a couple. See if these big, heavy 115 grain knives will knock them over. This is all, uh, I think it's UMC. Okay. Take a few more shots with this gun. It's a really nice one. Feels good. Okay. Go over and just see if it'll knock anything over. Of course, minor detail. 
in order for it to knock something over, I have to hit it, don't I? Uh, Mr. Piggy. <laughs> Slow. I tried to make sure I didn't have any of them set hard. Oh, I can't believe he fell. actually cooperating a little bit. Must be because they're going through the uh, CZ-75. A classic firearm. Hmm, nice. Well, this thing actually uh, shoots pretty well. Let's try the little piggy. Let's try that. Well, let's try the little chickens down there. I can't see up there. All right. <laughs> Is that a, I think that's a round target up there or something. You can't see it very well. Let's try a couple shots at it. Oh, tell you what. He's a male driver. He really is. Wow. Let's try the red disc, the rifle disc over there that usually safe for the rifle. It's got pretty sun on it. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Go buffalo hunting. Wait, let's come back close. Oh, there's a bowling pin I didn't take off. <laughs> All right, one more magazine. I'm gonna walk a little closer. All right, I'm gonna put the safety on and just pretend it's a 1911. Oh man, that thing fits like a glove. Feels good. Woo. Not much to hate about that gun and I have shot a little bit since I've had it just enough to uh, get a feel you know not not a lot of plinking just carried around the farm a couple of times took some shots and got a feel for where to hold the sights and uh, kind of reacquainted myself with it and uh, CZ 75 I can see why around the world it's such a popular popular gun it is a classic you know I, I apologized to my viewers for not having one sooner. It's like not having a 1911 almost, you know. Uh, they're in every country. Everybody knows about them. There are a lot of variants and they just uh, feel good. They shoot well and, uh, you know, what can I say? It's just another one of those fine firearms that we're fortunate uh, to have. So uh, I don't have to say, do I? Life is good. <laughs>